Hey everybody, Kenny here. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at where to find all of the ultimate weapon parts and craft them all in the game Ruin King League of Legends story. To start us off, we're going to be taking a look at Miss Fortune. We're starting off with her because her first piece is actually right in the same place where you craft all of these ultimate weapons. When you arrive in the Arcane Forge and you're going through all of the books that have the quests on how to craft these weapons for misfortune, hers just happens to be in her book. Just right there, you get that blasting crystal and you've got one piece already done. Which is good because the other parts are going to be way more complicated. For the next thing, you're going to need to collect these pieces of a set of blueprints that are going to be used as part of the recipe, I guess. There's one in the Jagged Hooks warehouse that you have to go to as part of Miss Fortune's early game story quest when she first joins you. There's going to be one sitting on this bridge over in the solder docks. Then over at Miss Fortune's kind of base of operations, there's going to be one just sitting right on the floor here. And over in the Watchtower District, there's going to be one right before the gondola. The final one is going to require some shadow marks. The merchant right here next to the fishing guy. And you can get that key that lets you into the lighthouse here. And at the top of the lighthouse, you're going to find the final piece. And that's going to be those blueprints settled for once you're ready to put everything together over at the Arcane Forge. Now, this next part is going to be way more complicated. Uh, so this maze dungeon is going to unlock at the same time that you get that lasting shard piece. Just kind of follow the path you're seeing on the screen here. Uh, when you get to the point that the fountain starts showing up, if there's water in the fountain, take the, the path with the red fire. If there's no water, then take the path with the blue fire, the blue or green fire, wherever it looks for you. And just keep on like that until you reach the room that has a kind of teleport pad in it that lets you warp back to the beginning and then you'll be able to open up the door that leads you to the next thing that you have to do here which is solving the liar's puzzle so if you've ever done one of these uh like these are randomly generated so there's going to be two that are lying one that's not you have to figure out which are the liars. It's going to be different no matter what. So I'm showing you what it was for me. But this is the solution one for me. So you can like read what, like which ones were, figure out which was the liars based on the dialogue that you saw there. And then based on the little plinths you see here, you know, follow the directions of the ones that weren't lying. So that by following those, you will be able to successfully complete the puzzle thereby giving you access to the final room in the maze in which waits a boss that you will have to take on. But it isn't too complicated. It's a pretty simple fight. And once it's all said and done, you can just open up the chest there and you'll get the barrels she needs to be able to head back to the Arcane Forge and craft Misfortune's ultimate weapon the Queen's Council, the most powerful weapon by far. Next up is Pike. Uh, we are returning to the merchant here, and this time we are going to be using our marks to pick up the Caulfield's Warhammer. So all you need are the marks, then you'll get that. In the Academy Gardens area, there will be a Pike dive point, which will lead you to this Stone Lake Repository dungeon, or kind of mini dungeon. Inside is a golem that you need to take on with just Pike, but don't worry about it. Like it is designed to be challenged by Pike alone, so you don't need to worry about like needing to like grind a ton to be able to beat it. It is designed to be beaten as Pike. So take it down real quick, and you will be rewarded with the serrated dirk, which is the second piece of Pike's weapon that you need. And finally, you need to head to the hunting grounds area to take on the most powerful of the bounties, which is the hole breaker. When you defeat it, you will receive the soul of the deep, which is the final piece to be able to craft the pike's weapon. However, 
I recommend having Pike in your party for that since it deals its damage based on the number of active debuff buffs it has. You'll understand when you fight it. And Pike is probably the best equipped to deal with that because he's able to just deal random debuffs. Next up is Yasuo. At a certain point, you're going to be able to take on this quest where someone at the pub is going to ask you to go into this warehouse here at the top of the elevator and disable a shipment that you're going to find inside of there. So just head into this little area, you know, deactivate the container. You're going to have a little combat encounter that you're going to need to take care of. It's a simple encounter. Don't worry, you know, don't worry about being challenged too deeply. And after that, you will be receive the Empyrean Whisker. The next piece you're going to get as part of Pike's story quest to just activate these like, little wind things in this order. And that will make this chest appear. And inside of it, you will get the maple seeds that are part of Yasuo's ultimate weapon. Then at the Crucible, uh, there will be a, a diver enemy that is definitely something that you should take on as Yasuo. I did this as Laoi and it took a very long time. So definitely you know, use Yasuo to do that and have, just have him set up for bleed to speed things up for you. Which will earn you the Janna Effigy, which is the final piece you'll need to be able to craft Yasuo's legendary weapon, the Storm Razor. You can see it's a very powerful weapon and definitely probably the most interesting of the ultimate weapons. Uh, next up is Elawi. The first piece you'll find for her is in the graveyard of the Shadow Isles, where you'll find this little gazebo that has this chest in it with the Hextech Hex uh, memento uh, in it. Uh, this part, you just need to defeat the, the Shadow Mistwalker enemies that are marked for you, that you'll be asked by one of the Mistwalker people to take care of and once you take care of all of them you'll get this piece of Elawi's weapon in this purification temple dungeon there will be a light puzzle that you need to finish in order to move forward so just follow the steps you're seeing here and at the end you'll get the ember encased snake take that to the bow of the serpent mother and when you offer it up as a tithing, you'll receive the Serpent, which is the final piece you'll need to be able to craft Elawi's weapon, the Heart of the Goddess. Great weapon for Elawi, and honestly, like the perfect accompaniment for her build for me, since she was one of my main units throughout the entire playthrough. Next up is Brahm. The reason Brahm is so deep on this list here is because he kind of fits in with how Ari's whole thing works. So in the Shadow Vaults, there's going to be this Brom door here. So you just have Brom do his thing. And after the scene ends, you will have a new weapon for Brom. Probably not going to be better than whatever you already had when you reach this point. But it is part of his weapon. So you need that. And the way that he opened up there will be needed for Ari's ultimate weapon quest later. This next part is more complicated. Unfortunately, you're going to have to do some fishing here. So just put on the best rod you have. Cast out your line to the fish the furthest out. Uh, try to stay with the path of the fish. So just make sure that the line is staying like blue or white. It's not turning red until the fish's stamina is all the way depleted. Then you can go and go against the grain if you want, which should get you Orange Enchanted Door and the True Ice Crystal which are pieces you need. Well, Thorn's shield isn't something you need, but you need that crystal. And this final piece is in the Vasani vault. You're going to eventually come across this portal hole. So just have Rom with you. A humorous scene is going to happen. And at the end of it, you're going to have a, a mild combat encounter. And once, is all, yeah, once all is said and done, you will come out with the enormous charged crystal which is the final piece you need to be able to craft Brahm's ultimate weapon, the Orn's Will. Very powerful defensive upgrade for Brahm, though to be honest, I never didn't really use him. 
Next up is Ari. She is the final character I'm going over here because for her, this, this is kind of annoying. So this is a... Like the thing you got for opening that chest isn't why I'm showing that. In order to complete the Veil Jumper bounty, you need to have found all of those chests, which I was able to find the other three just by playing through the game normally. But that one that you found in the Cario Manor, that one was a pain in the ass to find. I took I, It took me hours to figure out where that was. And I actually didn't figure it out. I had to look it up because I just got tired of not looking for that chest, but trying to figure out how to fight this guy. But anyway, like once you get that done, you get that Midnight Token, which is the first of the ones you need for Ari. Then in the Vault of the Vasani, this light puzzle here, I just follow the steps you're seeing. I just, you follow the pattern, you get the chest, and that will get Ari her Ice Fox token. And then finally, there are three conjunction chambers in the game. Once you reach uh, the one in the Vault of Vasani, you will find the instructions of the directions that need to be pointing. So this first one, as you like, uh, you can see the direction that you need to be pointing there over to the northwest. The one in the Vault of the Giants needs to be pointed north. And the one in the Shadow Vaults, which is the one that you unlocked by breaking that door down with Brom, you need to be pointing to the northeast, which will then unlock the Vault of the Blackbirds, which is where you will find the final piece of Ari's weapon, the Foxfire token. And once you have all of those, you can head to the forge and craft Ari's ultimate weapon, the Oblivion Orb, which just like Elawi, it fits right into her base thing that makes her an incredible healing unit and is definitely worth getting. So that's going to be the end of my series on Ruined King, a League of Legends story. I hope that you have found this guide helpful. If you have, and you would like to see more videos like this in the future, then please do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, share this video with any friends of yours that you think may find this video useful. I appreciate any new faces that they send my way. And with that said, Bay Victus, Virus and Numeris, and bye.